So in my previous video, I mentioned I got these uh, uh, iron core ferrites, uh, not ferrites, iron core toroids. So I was at the junk store and uh, they had a huge selection of ferrites. Ferrites are very, very common for killing EMI stuff and digital electronics and stuff. So not a lot of electronics is doing analog, um, but you can find some analog stuff in the, uh, in the junk store. And um, way up on a top shelf that I hadn't noticed before, they had these uh, iron core toroids. And so I thought, oh, that's great. Now iron core toroids are great, um, I think for switching power supplies, I think, I think they use iron core. Um, there's, a, there's a difference between using ferrite, which is a, uh, I think it's an iron oxide in ceramic, and these guys, which is like a, uh, I think these are like a, a iron, iron uh, powder that's, that's sintered or something. Um, I, I don't know that for sure. Maybe somebody could, maybe somebody knows. Um, but anyway, these are, these are, these are iron based and the other ones are, are uh, ceramic based. And uh, these are classically used in uh, filters and stuff in, in uh, uh, radios. And uh, one of the nice things uh, that you can do is build filters out of these things. So that's what I was interested in. That's why I got them. I thought I'd experiment with them. I've never really played with them before. I haven't really designed a filter. I've, I've built them in kits and I've seen them, uh, but I haven't really, you know, I haven't really experimented with them. So I thought it'd be a, a, be a fun thing to do. So uh, the way that you build inductors is that you uh, make a coil of wire, right? So. You know, you know, here, here's a coil of wire, and, and, and that's an inductor. Uh, and you can have what's called an air-spaced conductor. Or, 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 uh, and and you, you'll see these in radios. They're just loops of wire in air. There's no core. Um, and then you can build all different types of cores. You can have a straight core. A lot of um, AM radios have a, uh, an antenna matching coil that is a ferrite rod with a whole bunch of wire wrapped around it. And so they use a straight core. Um, but uh, round cores are, are very efficient because any, any fields that might just go off into Never Never Land um, circle back around and get used. So they're more efficient. Um, now, the way that these are generally uh, used is with enameled wire. But you can use insulated wire just fine. Um, I've built a lot of things with insulated wire and they work just fine. One of the reasons that you use uh, uh, this, this type of wire is that you can get it closer to the core, right? So there's, there's not a lot of uh, space between the core and the wire and that alleviates some losses. So the, the, uh, the tighter that you can get this uh, you can get the, the loops around the, uh, around the core, the better, right? So, so that's, a, those are, those are very, very tight. And, uh, also, uh, you can put them very, very close together so you can get more, more windings on a, on a particular size of core, right? Uh, you, you, you can spread them out or you can squish them, squish them together. And that actually changes the inductance of the inductor, I found out. Uh, when, I was, when I was making the, I was making some 21 turn and 20, 24 turn uh, inductors. And it did, it did vary quite a bit whether you had them uh, maybe only three quarters of the way around or all the way around. So three quarters of the way around, they're, they're squished together. Uh, closer and the inductance goes up and then when they're spread farther apart the inductance goes down so that that was interesting to me I didn't I didn't know that before um, so uh, what what to do with these things well I'm interested in building filters like I said and so one of the very first filters that uh, might be of interest if you're into a ham radio is a low pass filter so I've shown that in several places. I've shown that in the uh, little 40, 40 meter ME, I think it's called ME40 kit, uh, has a, a low pass filter in the output to, to make sure that, the reason that you have a low pass filter in the output is that you want to eliminate all the harmonics so you stay within uh, FCC compliance. Um, 
And so if you have a 7 megahertz transmitter, you're going to generate a harmonic at 14 megahertz and you want to kill that or suppress that. Um, so you have a low pass filter. It passes the, it passes the low, the 7, and it attenuates the high, the 14. And so that's what I thought I'd build here. Uh, see if I can build a, uh, uh, a attenuator. Now, not an attenuator filter, I'm sorry. Uh, I also showed uh, a, an outgoing filter on the uh, Gemini G3, uh, that four, uh, 400, uh, 70 centimeter amplifier that I was playing with. I think it was designed for 500 megahertz, but I was using it at, at uh, 440. It had an outgoing filter too, and we measured that. And yes, it's a low pass filter and it kills everything above, uh, I think it killed everything above 500 megahertz or 600 megahertz or something. So it killed the second harmonic. Now. I was thinking about using one of those uh, surplus radios and seeing if I can't get it to operate it at 144 megahertz, but that would require me to design a new uh, out output filter because um, its second harmonic would be at uh, 288 megahertz, and and so that filter that was in there wouldn't have worked. So I, I kind of want to be able to build a uh, a two meter uh, two meter filter, um, but uh, that's too big of a, of a leap for me right now. Uh, so I thought it'd stay with the uh, seven megahertz because it's easy to uh, it's easy to measure, and um, uh, I've got the tools for that. And uh, anyway, it's, it's easier, right? So I found uh, so there's tons of articles. If you go on um, on the internet, you'll find tons of articles about uh, how many wines does it take to make a certain uh, micro Henry inductance, and uh, and then there's a bunch of filters that people have. Uh, shown uh, how to use at particular frequencies and stuff. So um, so because I'm lazy, I always just copy everybody else. So here's somebody built a little filter. It's a three toroid and a four capacitor filter. Uh, it says it's an easy filter. Uh, so I get this guy credit, uh, KK9JEF, amateur radio from Midwest Nerd. All right. Um, so this is his filter. It's not his filter. Uh, it's it's a filter that he built. Um, it's probably uh, uh, I don't know what it is a Butterworth or something. Uh, what type of filter these things are? Um, so it's just a, a you know an LC filter, and he has some values. So. This is very simple construction. This is exactly the filter that's used on on the ME40. That's exactly the same filter that's used on the Gemini G3. Uh, just different values. So you just need to know the values. So here he has some values down for 20 meter, 30 meter, and 40 meter. So I looked at the 40 meter one, and it said you needed about a 270 picofarad. Uh, that's not really straight on the camera, is it? Um, about a 270 picofarad for this one and this one, and about a 600 and 680 picofarad for these two. And then you needed a 1.4, 1.4, and then 1.7, 1.7 microhenries. All right, so I'm digging around my, my capacitors for these values. Um, and he had problems too. He said, in order to get 270 picofarads, he used a 220 plus a 47. And then he used a 470 to 220, so he added some things together, and then he modified his windings, I guess, 32. Yeah, I think he modified his windings a bit, too. So anyway, um, certainly it's easy to modify the windings, right? So I think what you do is you try to find the r close capacitor, and then maybe modify the windings for your design. Probably should put this in spice, but that's no fun. Um, so what I did... Um, was I just cobbled something, just cobbled something together. It's really, really ugly. Um, and so I have, uh, uh, I think these are 340. So I have a 340 and then two 340s and then two 340s and then a 340. So like a one, two, two, one uh, ratio. And so I have six, 180 instead of 690, so that's really close for this one. And then this one's way too high. Instead of uh, 270, it's 340. 
but I'm not sure if the outside ones matter as much as the inside. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. And then I know this winding here is too high. This is too much inductance, but I just wanted to try something out. And I know my, my layout is really, really poor. I have really long leads on everything. And, and that's actually on purpose. This is just a trial run. This is not meant to be a, anything. I just want to give it a trial. And I like to leave the leads on my capacitors as long as I can until I actually use them. So I'm just kind of tacking things in and uh, I just want to try it out. I just want to see if I'm in the ballpark because I don't know, I don't know if these cores are of the right material to, to even do this, right? The cores come in all sorts of different materials and, and from a junk store, I, ju I just don't know these. I know it's painted yellow and a lot of people think that's a type six, but you know, the box in the store was labeled type 45. And if you look up type 45, it's supposed to be for power supply usage. So I don't know if it'll work at megahertz usage. So anyway, I just want to give it a try. So what I've done is I've hooked it up and uh, you can see all the, uh, the, the, the grounds are hooked to the ground plane and then everything else comes on top. So it's just kind of a dead buck, dead buck, dead bug construction, can't talk. All right, and uh, let's go ahead and sweep this and, and see what it does with the values I have. We can kind of see what it does and then we can go measure these values and see, you know, does theory, does theory match uh, practice? Um, so I'm going to turn on my uh, spectrum analyzer. I'm going to go ahead and sweep this, um, oh, let me get this book out of the way. I'm going to sweep this just because, um, <laughs> actually the, the real reason is I want to sit down. My, my, um, the, 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 test gear that would be best for this is my, uh, is my uh, 8921, but I have to stand up to use that. And I just want to sit down right now. So I'm going to sweep this with my generator. Uh, the generator will go between one and 15 megahertz. And then we'll take a look at it over here on the uh, spectrum analyzer. So let's do that. Okay, let's uh, take a look up here. And uh, it's nice having a spectrum analyzer on the bench. I don't have to get up. So you can see that my, I am sweeping here. There's a bunch of noise in the room. If I turn the lights up, oh yeah, that noise goes away. So all that noise is due to these darn LED lights that I have. Um, but since they're below the, below the signal level, I don't think they'll get in the way. So anyway, there's my sweeper sweeping. Okay. I think you can see that and you can see that it's falling off. So it's kind of acting as a low pass filter. So we'll do a, um, we'll do a max hold and we'll see how it looks. So it's not a tracking generator, right? It's uh, asynchronous. And so it takes a while for it to finally fill in all the gaps. I wish I had a tracking generator on this uh, spectrum analyzer, but I don't, but there we go. It doesn't take that long. When you're retired, you have all the time in the world. All right, what is it? Uh, I got nothing to do and all day to do it. All right, so there's our filter. It looks like a low pass filter. Uh, let's turn the marker on. And uh, let's see here, uh, minus 16, minus, if that's minus 16, then minus 19 is a 3 dB point. So the 3 dB point is at 7.55 megahertz. So it's right at, let's see, let me, let me set the marker to seven megahertz. So seven megahertz is right there. So it's very, very close to, to where I need it to be. It's a little too short. And I think that's because my one inductor, instead of being 1.7 microhenries, it's about 2.4 microhenries. So it's way on the long side, but I can take off some windings. So, and we'll see if that shifts over. It should, uh, but I'm super, super happy. Um, so let me show you how that I make measurements here. Um, if I want to know how, how far down this is, you could do, you could do a marker, you could do a Delta marker and then th bring this marker down. And then you could read off that, that this is a uh, minus 36 DB down. Okay. Um, I guess that's the right way to do it. So we'll just do it. We'll just do it that way. I, I do it. I used to, I used to like to do it. Well, let me show you the other way to do it. Uh, let me turn the marker to normal. Um, you bring the marker up here, up to the top, 
and then you do say marker to uh, reference level. And it takes that marker and pushes it up to the top. And now you can just read off like, you know, 10, 20, 30. You can just, you can just look at it visually and see how far down it is instead of having to think too hard. Anyway, um, so that's one way of doing it. And uh, the other way to do it is these uh, delta markers. Um, and where's my, where's my delta marker? Here it is. So that little dip right down there is minus 38 dB. And, and so the second harmonic is going to be at about 14 megahertz. So 14 megahertz is right there. Oh, stop frequency 15 megahertz. Huh. Oh, there we go. 15 megahertz marker. Oh, I have delta marker on. Okay, let's change this. Marker, normal marker. There we go, 15 megahertz. Okay, so 14 megahertz is right, is right there. So 14 megahertz is right at the bottom of this filter. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's great. It's gonna be minus, uh, minus 40, 40 dB down. Uh, so that'll be, uh, that'll be a really, really nice filter. Um, so if your second harmonic is already down, then this will just take it down even farther. So this would be a great filter for that. But I think the thing to do is let's go ahead and remove, remove the center uh, inductor. These inductors I think are pretty spot on in, in um, value. And we'll take this inductor out and we'll, we'll remove a couple of turns until we get the uh, 1.7 uh, microhenries and see if everything improves. All right, so let's measure this uh, this middle inductor. I did the 24 turns on it, like it said, but it came out too high. Um, yeah, it's measuring 2.4 microhenries. So I think what it is is this uh, these cores are a little bit more dense, permeability-wise, than uh, the other ones. So we can take off. We can take off some winding, so let's do that and see if we can get to that 1.7. So let's pull off a, oh, let's pull off this winding. Let's do a winding, a winding at a time. Why not? Uh, pull that one off, and we get to. Geez, only 2.3. Okay, maybe we take two windings off. Whoa. Okay, take this winding off. Take this winding off. All right, let's see what that does. Two, we're getting closer. All right, so let's spread them out a bit too. Let's spread these out, that'll lower it, I think. So let's push these, push these over a little bit. Let's measure that. Yep, 1.9. See, it, uh, they're, if they're spaced out a little farther, it uh, goes back down. It's still around, still a little too high here. So let's uh, let's take off another one. Let's see if we're getting closer to the 1.7. Ooh. And 1.8. One so what's the value that we want? We want one point, one point, and actually 1.7. So let's take off one more winding. Seems like about a, a tenth per winding here. So let's take that one off. Uh, it's not auto inductoring. Is that a word? I don't think so. There it goes, inductor 1.8. We'll call that good. All right, let's call that good. So now we'll put this back in the circuit and see if our uh, filter moves to the right. Um, it should have less inductance, and so it should pass higher, uh, higher frequencies. So let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and snip this off. 
and uh, put this in circuit. So I was a uh, oh, I got up the other book here. This is the this is the A R R L handbook, and uh, and it's kind of hard to do here. But here's the filters. These are uh, it says low pass capacitor input filters for the Butterworth and Chebyshev families. Um, so I think I think these are Butterworth filters. I, I don't know what it takes to make them Chebyshev. Um, I'm not that good at filter design when you call one one and one the other. I know that Butterworths are flat and Chebyshev's have some ringing in them. But uh, yeah, anyway, it doesn't really matter. For, uh, for this application, it doesn't matter too much. So let's uh, get off this uh, enamel. So what I do is I go to the edge of the bench here and scrape off the, uh, you know, I read that some people like to just use a soldering iron and I've never had good luck with that. Just heating up with a soldering iron. Sometimes if the wire is really, really small, that works. I've had a little bit of luck, but big wire like this, I just, I just haven't had much luck. Other people say use a, a butane lighter and try to burn off the, uh, burn off the stuff, but that doesn't seem to work for me. This is, <laughs> scraping it seems to be the only thing that works for me, so whatever. I am just not worthy, I guess, I don't know, whoops. Let's tin this, all right. Now let's put this back in circuit. Let's see, let's put, let's put this side in. Got a big blob of solder there. Fine. And over here, can I just get a big blob? Of, I, need, I need some more solder on this side. All right. I think that will do it. Looks like it's making contact. Um, all right. So now we should just be able to move right over to the. Uh, spectrum analyzer and see if it's any different and it it did change let's see here trace but it yeah it did get longer see that excellent it got longer nice and our 14 so this is marker so our 14 megahertz is down there. So I think it moved a little too far to the right. And that's probably because my, my capacitors are a bit too large with that. No, that would slow it down. We want to speed it up. So maybe, um, maybe I put a wind back onto that uh, inductor or squeeze them. Let me squeeze them. I'm just going to squeeze them together a little bit. See if that changed it at all. No, not much. Maybe I'll put a wind or two back on. Um, but this filter design looks great. Uh, let's go up to seven megahertz. Yeah, so see, seven megahertz is right here now. Whereas before, it was kind of right on the edge. And so, you know, the 40, 40 meter band is going to be right in here. And we want it rolling off before we get to the 14. So I think we've actually gone a little too far. But this filter is doing exactly what I want it to do, even with these capacitor values, um, which are pretty crude. So I think the next trip to the junk store might be to find, find some of these capacitor values uh, for these filters. So I'm going to remove this. Show you a little bit closer here my construction, uh, my construction technique. Um, I'm just using a piece of uh, single-sided FR4, and I've soldered down all of the grounds. And I put a little loop here at the bottom so I can clip, clip on ground leads to it. And then uh, here I've just big, got big blobs of, uh, <laughs> big blobs. So if I was gonna turn this into a circuit that I would use, I would keep all the leads really, really short. And um, 
Another thing that you can do is actually separate the sections. I don't know if it's necessary on a filter like this, but sometimes having a, a shielding between the two so they won't talk to one another helps. But the filter seems to be really, really well behaved. So I don't, I don't think that's necessary in a design like this. Um, and like I said, I think I'll put a couple windings, I'll put a couple windings back on this and, and move it to the place we want. Um, and I've got enough, uh, I got enough wire here to add, add at least two more windings. So let, let me do that. Uh, let me do that right now, and we'll see how our uh, how our filter turns out. All right, I, I played with a little bit. I took a winding off, took a winding back on. I took some other windings off and stuff. And so I played with this this middle inductor here until I got the picture that I wanted um, for the bandpass. And let me show you what I decided on that I liked. Um, so the marker right now is set at uh, 7, 7.13 megahertz. So the top of the band is what, 7.3? And so that's the top of the two meter band. So it runs out flat to about uh, 7.9 megahertz and then starts to, starts to fall off. So it keeps the uh, two meter band up here on the high and not close to the uh, waterfall here. And then down here at 14 megahertz, uh, I'm right down there at the bottom and so yeah that's so that's great and then up here on the top it looks very very flat so I really like this filter it seems to it seems to work really really good even with these uh, a little bit bizarro uh, values that I have for capacitors um, but again uh, I'm able to adjust the inductors easily so um, yeah if I can get the capacitors close then I can play with the windings and uh, and adjust things here and uh, get a uh, get a good looking picture so uh, yeah so I really like that um, I really enjoy this wire that I found I, I got it at a, um, a flea market it's a 19 gauge and it says 3.24 pounds so anyway there's, there's a lot here I got this super cheap I think I paid five bucks for that um, so it's a real nice uh, size wire. This 19 gauge wire is a really nice, uh, nice gauge. I've got some finer stuff, but for this, it seems to be the ideal, ideal size for these, uh, for these inductors. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the junk store. I'm gonna buy some more than the inductor since they're only 25 cents. Um, might as well keep, them, keep a bunch around and, and uh, play, with some other, uh, play with some other circuits with them. Um, yeah, I think this is gonna be, uh, I think this is going to be really fun building uh, building different circuits, and I'm thinking maybe if I can figure out how to do it, maybe build some little mini uh, balance or uh, 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 transformers uh, to to couple a couple oscillators or mixers and stuff. Maybe uh, maybe play with them for that too. I've never done any of this type of stuff, so it's all it's all new to me. Um, but uh, yeah, seems like a nice little uh, nice little breadboard.